of the Lord tonight. Would you lift your hands all over this house and begin to just worship the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus. I love that uh, Sister Elizabeth said that tonight because that's one of my favorite hymns of all time. The one that she was referencing, I used to grow up singing that. It's still one of the number one things I sing. Even when I'm home by myself, sometimes I'll just sit at the piano and say, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I love that part. Sing it again. What can wash? Sing what can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can make me whole again? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, oh precious. We're singing oh. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, oh precious, sing, oh precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other found I. Nothing but, it's nothing but, you got it, of G. My favorite verse says this. This is all my hope and peace. It's nothing but the blood of G. Jesus, and this is all my righteousness. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, oh precious, sing, oh precious, use the flow that makes me white as snow. No other. Found I know nothing but the blood of come on one more time every voice oh precious and oh precious is the flow that come on white as we're singing no other found I know Nothing but the blood of Come on. Nothing but the blood, oh, nothing but the blood of G. Come on, one more time. Nothing but, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, clap your hands if you love him tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Amen. Come on, every hand lifted. Just worship that name that's above every other name. The mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory. I just feel like singing. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. We us again. Come on, sing hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us up. One more time, say it. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Yes, hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us up. Let me hear you sing it, come on. Sing hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 
revive us. Come on, one more time. And hallelujah. Woo. Sing hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us. If you believe in for a revival in your own life, revive us uh, one more time. Revive us again. Well, clap your hands if you love the Lord tonight. Praise God, it's on. Thank God we paid the electric bill. Some churches are just shouting into thin air. Amen. I'm happy, man. It's good to see every one of you on a Monday night. What a great crowd on a Monday. Let me tell you something. You could have been anywhere else tonight. You're here in the house of God. I commend you because that means you're hungry for the things of the Spirit. And uh, I love that because the Bible actually tells us, Matthew chapter 5, or excuse me, Matthew chapter, yeah, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. The Bible says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? For they shall be filled. Somebody just say, I'm going to be filled in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's your promise. If you're in the house hungry for a move of the Holy Ghost, hungry for his word, the promise is we'll all be filled. That includes the preacher. I'm ready, I'm ready to be touched by God tonight myself. Some people think, well, he does all the preaching. No, I get it while I'm preaching. Amen. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to preach before I take the microphone. God tells me at that moment, and, and then we just all receive. Amen. It's exciting for me, too, because I don't know what in the world I'm going to say. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why some pastors won't have me in. Amen. Never know what he's going to say. That's a good. If it's by the Holy Ghost, it's a good thing. Amen. <laughs> Not in the flesh. And I'm telling you, I love this word. Pastor and I were talking about this. The power of this word, the word of God. There's nothing higher. There's nothing that is more forceful in the universe. You know what I love that Jesus said? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Glory to God. Everything else you see is finite, but this word is infinite. Isn't that powerful? And as, as I was preaching to you last night, the Bible says that this word holds priority of power over every situation. The reason I, I say that, if you look at Isaiah 55, 11, God said, when my word goes forth, it never returns empty and void, but it always accomplishes what I send it to do and prospers in the thing whereunto I've sent it. So what we find out is, no matter where he sends his word, it performs where he sends it. Somebody say this with me tonight. God's word has performance power. Amen. It performs wherever he sends it. What devil is going to tell God no? What sickness is going to tell God no? Amen. What attack is going to overrun the power of God? None. That's why I love what Paul told the Roman church. He said, if God be for you, tell me who can be against you. I like to sometimes say it like this just to get it into people's minds. If God be for you, who cares who's against you? Amen. <laughs> Who cares? Because if God's on your side, everything else takes second place. Not even. Not even. You know, I don't know. You've probably heard this worship song we've, we've sung now. It's kind of relatively new, and it's not brand new. But there's a song. I don't even know who sings it. Maybe Brother Paul would be able to tell me. There's a song that says, you have no rival. You ever heard that? You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. You've heard that song? Stop and think about that phrase for one second. You have no rival. Think about that. If you, if you watch sports, you know there's, there's bitter rivals in sports. There's rivalries between teams. You watch college football. You watch college basketball. They got rivalries. But when you think about that, you look and you watch those games, sometimes one side of the rivalry wins. Sometimes the other side of the rivalry wins. They go back and forth as the fans. We got you this year. We're taking you out this year. And the rivalry continues. But that phrase ought to get in your spirit. God has no rival. Oh, hallelujah. What, what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes we get this mental picture. 
there's even a meme that's going around. It goes on Instagram. It's on Facebook. You may have seen it. It's like Satan and Jesus arm wrestling. You ever seen this one? You know, the devil's got a big old bicep, and he's sitting there, you know, looking all tough, and Jesus' arm like, there is no contest. There's no contest. See, some people think, you know, the devil's like the dark God. of the. He's got all the evil power, and then Jesus is like the light God. He's got that, all the, you know, the good power, and they're just battling nonstop. No. My Bible tells me that Jesus Christ has already defeated him. And stripped away from him the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says he led captivity captive and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And the Bible says that he, Jesus even declared this, all power is given unto me. One thing that I understand, my, my kids are, are being schooled, my wife is teaching our kids. She's homeschooling our children as we travel together. And one of my daughters has gotten into fractional math. I never liked fractional math. Adding up fractions. And uh, fractional math. But one thing you'll learn about fractional math, you could cut it up like a pie chart. That's the easiest way to see it. And if somebody were to bake me a blueberry pie, which I love, and I can't eat it right now because I can't have sugar, but blueberry pie, and we cut that thing into seven slices. If I sat down at the table and ate all seven of the slices and the crumbs and licked the dish clean, how many slices are left for you? None. You know why? Fractional math. I ate all the pie. Hallelujah. Seven out of seven is a full number. It's gone. And when Jesus said all power, that means there's not even a crumb left for the devil to have. There's not even a small amount left for the devil to have. That's why the Bible says, and Paul wrote it to the Corinthian church, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's called us more than conquerors. He said that we always triumph in his name. Somebody shout, I'm always victorious. As the younger people say, all I do is win. Amen. That's, you have to understand there's never a time where you are not victorious in the spirit realm. There's never a time that you're in a place where you're going to lose. Jesus already won and then handed you his victory. He handed you his victory. Oh, hallelujah. You know what I love about that? I don't have to win the victory. He already won it. That's a powerful thought. I don't have to win the victory. He already won it. That's a freeing thought. That that thing's not hanging on your shoulders. Like every morning you have to win up, or wake up and defeat the devil and win the victory. No, he's already defeated. How many have ever heard of a, a, a preacher, a, a lady, wonderful lady, she's getting up there now. Her name's Marilyn Hickey. How many have ever heard of Sister Marilyn Hickey? I remember she took her high-heeled shoes and she wrote with black sharpie marker on the bottom of her high-heeled shoes and one side it said the devil's and the other side said home hallelujah the devil's home under my feet somebody shout he's under my feet the devil is so far under your feet that he doesn't even have access to you for the bible says that even though you were dead in your trespasses and in your sins he raised us up together and seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's what I love about that. Far above all principalities, all powers, all dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. Oh, hallelujah. And has put all things under Christ's feet and made him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. So that means if I'm seated where Jesus is seated, what demon has access unto me? Oh, hallelujah. No devil, no enemy has access when you stand in the authority of where you're seated. Can you shout amen? amen. And uh, I'm just telling you, there is victory in the understanding of what 
God said about you. That's why one of the biggest things, you know, Christians don't live defeated because they don't have power. They live defeated because they don't know they have power. Woo. I'm going to say that again. Christians don't live defeated because they don't have power. It's because they don't know they have power. Imagine this. If you had property, but you were not sure where your property line began or where it ended, then a couple things. You could never accuse somebody of trespassing if you don't know where your property starts. You don't even know where you can legally build a fence because you don't know where your property starts. And if somebody came and just decided to start building a house, you could not go out and say, hey, you can't build here. This is my property. Oh, are you sure? Well, I think it is. <laughs> so you just stop right now. But there, see that? There's a discrepancy. There's a problem. I can't be bold. I can't be sure because I don't know. But once I pull out the plans, once I pull out the plans and I know where my property line begins and where it ends, I can stand up and say, this belongs to God. This far and no further. Hallelujah. You've got no access to my house, to my body, to my mind, to my children, to my finances. You're trespassing on God's property. Do you believe it? And so when you know, see, Old or New Testament is the same. Old or New. In the Old Testament, it was said like this, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So what he's saying is they don't know, so they're destroyed. They don't know, so they're destroyed. They don't know, so they're destroyed. Jesus said it a little differently in the New Testament. John 8, 32, he said, you'll know the truth, and it's the truth that will, Woo, glory to God, it's what you know. What you know will kill you or it'll make you alive. Amen. Amen. What you know is important. Amen. I remember when I was growing up, we used to watch G.I. Joes, American Heroes. And at the end of the show, they'd give you a little like public service announcement for the kids, you know. You know, always look both ways before you walk across the street. <laughs> now you know. And knowing's half the battle. That's what they used to say every week. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? Now you know. And knowing's half the battle. Yeah, and that's actually scriptural. Because when you know, you'll be set free. When you know, you'll not be destroyed. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. So let's flip that around. Where there is vision, the people flourish. Oh, hallelujah. Where there is vision. When you do have scriptural knowledge, it causes you to abound in the goodness of God. And I wanted you to open your Bible with me quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I was looking at this and it just blew up in my spirit. I'm so happy that uh, Sister Elizabeth sang that song tonight because that's a song that just gets my spirit stirred up every time we sing it. It's one of my favorite. It was like God giving me a gift tonight. It's one of my favorite songs to sing. When you sing about the blood, something happens. Something happens. You know what I found out? Demons don't like songs about the blood. I've been in plenty of revival services. We've had to cast demons out of people. And that ain't just in the movies, by the way. I just got back from Brazil last year. I was in Brazil, out west, and uh, packed out meetings. Man, I went to several cities. And last night, we had a packed out church and packed out overflow rooms. 1,600 in the main sanctuary, 400 in overflow rooms, two overflow rooms. And I said, if you want to be saved, I gave the altar call. Of course, I had an interpreter. Because I was like out west where it's like all Portuguese. You don't, they don't speak any English. It wasn't the city. I was in the rural part. And so no, I needed an interpreter to do anything. Order my lunch. And he was there with me. And so I'm calling people to Jesus. If you need to serve the Lord, come to the altar now. And here they come. I mean flooding the altar. And here they come to pack it out. And here I see a woman. She was like she was highlighted to me. Probably about four foot nine. And she's stalking down to the altar with a mad face. And she's got her arms crossed. And she comes down. I mean, you could tell something was up. And she's standing there, and she's looking at me with an angry face at the front, you know, standing right down here. And uh, I thought, well, maybe she, I don't know why she's upset. Well, she's she going to be happy in a minute when she gets saved. Amen. <laughs> and, and so I said, well, let's pray. 
the prayer of salvation. I started to lead the prayer of salvation there at the altar. And right when I started leading the prayer of salvation, she started manifesting right there in the front. And she started screaming, and she ran across the altar trying to punch all the new believers in the face. It, now listen, it's demonically inspired. It took four full-grown men to hold this four-foot-nine woman down to the ground with demonic strength. She was manifesting. If you've ever seen pure hate coming out of somebody's eyes and face, she was just looking like that. Well, I said, I'm not going to let the devil distract me from the altar call. We prayed the rest of the prayer. We got everybody there saved, probably over 150 salvations there that night, and people lifting their hands thanking God. But she's still growling and all this on the floor, and I just got ticked off in the spirit. <laughs> you ever been there? The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Amen. <laughs> Jesus got mad. The Bible teaches he does, and he had a righteous indignation. And I, I wasn't even thinking, really. I just got so bold about it, and the platform was about this high. And I took off running and jumped. <laughs> I had not measured it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I ran and just leaped off the platform like that, and when I landed, boom, I was straddling this little woman on the ground. <laughs> and she's like trying to get up. She's looking at me with the most angry and demonic face you've ever seen. And of course, you know, I was by myself at that point because my interpreter wasn't going to jump off the platform. <laughs> he was smart. He took the stairs, which... <laughs> thinking again maybe you know I should have done it and so I got down and I, without even thinking about anything I spoke not to the woman but right to the demon possessing the woman I said you're coming out tonight in Jesus name and literally she without no Portuguese no she said in English the demon spoke back no I'm not in English my interpreter finally arrived said didn't need you for that one <laughs> Just found out the devil doesn't just speak English. He speaks Portuguese. He speaks every language. She, the demon spoke her back. No, I'm not. Just like that. He looked at me all amazed that she's speaking English. Nobody there does. And so I, I said, oh, oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Infinity touch blue. Make it true. I said, oh, yes, you are. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of the woman. And she, just like the Bible says, I'd never seen it in this way. I've cast demons out before. I've never seen it like this, but just like the Bible says, it, you ever read that passage of scripture? And it tore at him and left. It was like it tore, that thing tore, and she violently like convulsed, and then she fell limp on the ground. That thing went right out in Jesus' name. Now watch how supernatural. She came to the, little, the ladies, the prayer ladies in the church, the prayer warriors. They, they kind of woke her back up, got her back up, and she's, she, her eyes came open. She came to herself. And then she starts speaking in Portuguese. Where am I? How did I get here? What is this place? She didn't even know where she was in church. She came in. She said, how did I get here? What is this place? They told her. They led her over to where the pastor was sitting, sat her down next to the pastor. Pastor led her to Jesus in Portuguese. And that was the night I was anointing everybody in the building with oil and praying the prayer of faith to bless. And here she comes through the line. She's one of those big smile on her face with her hands lifted. She, she just got pulled into church. She didn't even know. Now she's saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. By the power of God. Amen. Why? Because when you come into the presence of God, the presence of God is more powerful than any attack of the devil. More powerful. Somebody shout more powerful. And that's why I had you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 because here in this verse, Paul's writing says something so amazing. And this is the uh, verse I'm sure you know by heart, but here in the 17th chapter of 2 Corinthians 3, listen to this. The Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Glory to God. There is freedom. You know, I did a deep word study on that in the Greek language. You know what that means there, that word freedom? Freedom. <laughs> means freedom. Means liberty. There's no deep translation. It means what it says. That when God's spirit shows up, freedom shows up. You know, God doesn't travel by himself. He travels with an entourage. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of so joy comes with him when he comes. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So not only is joy there, freedom's there. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when he shows up and joy shows up, strength also shows up. Glory to God. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that 
healeth thee. When he shows up, healing shows up. Any bondage presented to you by the devil is not strong enough to hold you when the presence of the Lord is in manifestation. Every wicked thing has to bow its knee to the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It has to loose its grip and let go by the power of God. If you believe it, shout aloud, amen. amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Glory to God. Yeah. I tell you, you come into a, a church with liberty, church with freedom like this one, we're not all bound up in religious tradition and nobody wants to do it. Don't nobody, it, you know, some places you go, if one person just lifted their hand, you just know the anointing's there to raise the dead. <laughs> so, I've been to churches so dead first church of God's frozen chosen I've, I've I've walked in before it's like you know if somebody had a heart attack and died during the service paramedics come in and have to check 26 people before they found the dead person <laughs> no it's not him he's still beaten no she's good but I thank God to come to a church where there's liberty where there's life hallelujah a church on fire for God, not ashamed of the Holy Ghost, hungry for the things of the Spirit. Somebody ought to thank God for Bethany right now, where the Spirit of God is moving, where the power of God is flowing. Don't take it for granted. Let, let me encourage you. Don't take for granted the mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Don't take for granted the freedom of the Spirit because it's not everywhere. And I thank God that we are where he is. I said we are where he is. We are where he is. I don't want to go where he's not. I want to go where he is. See, because when you go outside of where he is, now I'm not saying he's not omnipresent, but there are people who do not allow him to manifest his spirit. Do you know just because God's everywhere, it doesn't mean he's manifesting everywhere? That's why Paul gave the instruction. Don't despise prophesyings. Don't forbid speaking in tongues. He was giving them instructions to let God manifest his spirit when he wants to move. You know what? It's his house, not my house. Amen. If he wants to move in his house, Lord, have your way. That's why we pray. Lord, have your way. What not my will, but your will be done. Glory to God. Not my will, but your will be done. And when you come into a place where the Spirit of God is moving and you're yielded to the things of God, He'll begin to do things that He's always wanted to do. He always wants to heal His people. He always wants to bless His people. He always wants to touch His people. It's just that there are people who reject and refuse the moving of the Holy Ghost. What did Stephen say? You stiff-necked people. How long? Will you reject? That's what he said. I mean, you think about it. When they're ready to kill you, you might want to water down your final speech. You know, we can make this take a while, buddy. We've got the big rocks right now. We'll go to the smaller ones. And he didn't hold back, did he? Stephen stood up in Acts chapter 7. You stiff-necked people. How long? I mean, he let them have it. They said, oh, you want to talk to us? Bam. He was the first martyr. We see him fall. Down, he said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. And God received his spirit into heaven as the first martyr of the Christian church. And he, he didn't go down quiet. He didn't go down ashamed. He went down swinging until they threw the final stone. Because he wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And when we're in a place where God's spirit is moving, let me tell you, anything can happen. I said anything can happen. Don't ever think something's hard for God. You know, I've heard even preachers get up and they'll use a phrase, and I've probably used it too because it just gets ingrained in you. And I've heard preachers get up and say, how many know nothing's too hard for God? And I thought to myself, too hard? When you use the word too, that implies levels of difficulty. Well, this one's harder, but I can still do it. No, it's not that nothing's too hard for God. Nothing's hard for God. It's all easy for God. You know, there's people. I know when people think what they're battling is too much for God to handle because they'll come to the altar and they say, Brother Ted, would you pray for me? Sure, I'll pray for you. What can I? And you know they think it's serious when they whisper it to you. <laughs> well, come here, Brother Ted. You know, doctor said it's cancer. And when they whisper it, you know they think 
this is a long shot. But if God can do anything, if he can do anything, listen, I know he formed the world with his words, but if he can do anything, huh? I know he spoke one word and every demon in the universe trembles, but if he can do anything. You know, it's funny to me. There's people that will let their marriage completely be destroyed. We've got Bible-believing Christians. They believe God will raise the dead. They believe he'll open blind eyes. But he can't heal this marriage. I'm telling you, this marriage is too far gone. I'm telling you, he's a healer. He's not just a healer of sickness. He's a healer of brokenness. He's a healer of broken relationships. He'll bring your... Listen, he will bring your heathen husband home full of the Holy Ghost. He'll, be, he'll bring your heathen wife home full of the Holy... Do you know, everybody talks about Smith Wigglesworth, like the mighty man of God. You know, he wasn't the first one to get saved. His wife, Polly, got saved. I don't know if you know the story. Polly got saved first. And she came home. He was just a plumber in Bradford, England, working with his hands. She came home from the, union, the mission there in Bradford, had gotten saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and she told him, Smith... I've gotten saved. I serve the Lord. And he grabbed her and he said, I ain't going to have no saved Holy Ghost tongue-talking woman in my house. Threw her out the front door and locked her out of the house. <laughs> Threw her out and locked her out. Do you know by the love of God, she stayed right there on the porch steps all night long and just waited. And when he unlocked the door in the morning get the paper, she came in with a sp sweet spirit, made him breakfast in the kitchen, and began to go right back to living with him how she did. And do you know later, he was the one that got saved second, not first, and God called them into the ministry, and the power of God began to use Smith and Polly all over England and America and around the world to change the world by the God. And then I love this, because at the end of his life, he was gone preaching. And he got word, your, your wife is dying. And he came and he was coming home to see her, Polly, before she went home to be with the Lord. And before he could get there, she died. And he went up. This was a man of bold faith. This is in his story. You read his life story. He went right up into the bedroom where she was dead in bed. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, he raised her from the dead in the bedroom. And she came back to life. And she said, Smith, what are you doing? I was with Jesus. You know, some people don't want to come back from heaven. She's like, I was with Jesus. And, he's, and he was very gruff, if you ever understood how he was. He said, I know. I just never got to say goodbye. Kissed her, said goodbye, and let her go back to heaven. <laughs> Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. There is breakthrough anointing and power. Nothing's impossible. Nothing is hard for the God you serve. Oh, yeah. Nothing's hard. For the God that you serve. Don't ever look at what you're dealing with. What you're battling. And say well this one's going to be a rough one. I don't care if it's the common cold. Or stage 4 cancer. There's nothing hard for God. I said there's nothing hard for God. The germs of the cold. Have got to die when his spirit comes in. But in the same way. Cancer cells have to shrivel and die. And pass from your body. When the power of God comes upon you. Because his spirit is greater. Than sickness or disease. I prayed for a pastor in Maine. He was such a severe diabetic type 2. Listen to this. Some of y'all just gasp when I say it. Because most churches normally do. His doctor had him on 300 units of insulin a day. I don't know how you don't go into a coma. But this man whose knee's gone bad, doctor said, you're going to have to stop pastoring your church. I was preaching, and I saw him, and I didn't even know any of that. I said, Pastor, the Lord shows me God's going to heal you today. He said, I believe it. Lifted his hands. I laid hands on that precious man of God, and the anointing came upon him. Well, I came back to see him the next year. I was preaching at his church same time of the year, the year after. He said, oh, Brother Ted, i got to give you a testimony. I said, tell me what happened. He said, do you know the other day I sat down and I took five units to go with my breakfast. I was getting ready to eat my breakfast, took five units of insulin. And he said, I had an insulin reaction in my body. He said, I went back to the doctor and the doctor did blood work. He said, Pastor, what in the world's happened to you? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, what have you been doing? He said, I'm looking at your blood work here. He said, your sugar, your A1C, all the levels. He said, this is, this is insane. I'm going to have to take you off insulin completely. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. In one year, God began by miracle-working power 
to heal his body. Do you know his knees came back to him? And he got hired by a Bible school. And they sent him traveling all around preaching at churches and calling young people into the ministry. And that's what he's doing today. Hallelujah. He's still preaching the gospel. He's still seeing God move. He's still seeing the next generation touched by God. When the spirit of the Lord shows up, there's nothing God can't do. One of my favorite stories, it's in the book that I published, Blood on the Door. You can get it. It's uh, Dr. John G. Lake was overseas in the turn of the last century, late 1800s into the early 1900s. And he and another man were missionaries to South Africa. Now, this was during the time of the bubonic plague, which touched every continent of the world. There was no cure. People were dying left and right. It was so contagious. Think about this. It was so contagious that people were still contagious after they died because the plague became pneumatic, got in your lungs, and when you would die, foam would form around the mouth of the person who passed away. And even the foam was highly contagious. And so because of that, people wouldn't even bury the dead. They wouldn't even pick the dead up to go bury them. And this man, Dr. John G. Lake, Holy Ghost preacher, for he was a medical doctor, and he and his assistant were in South Africa as people were dying. And they were going right into their homes, picking them up over their shoulders, taking them outside, and burying them in the ground. He said in his life story, he said at the time, the governments were trying to pay people. Now think about this amount of money in 1899. The governments were trying to pay people $1,000 to bury the dead, and nobody would take the money. That's how scared people were. And he was just out there day after day taking dead people out and burying them. Well, finally, a ship arrived, a medical transport ship from the U.K. arrived, and they had heard about what Dr. Lake was doing. And they said, Dr. Lake, we've been wanting to talk to you. How in the world? They said, what preventatives are you using to deal with these people who've had the plague? He said, I'm not using any preventatives, brethren. He said, but I can tell you this. I bet you'll want to do a, a, an experiment on me. He said, because I got something I am using called the law of life in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. He said, it's the law. They said, what is the law of life in Christ? He said, well, let me show you. And this is in his biography. He said, let me show you. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find one of these victims that we're getting ready to bury. I want you to scrape the foam off the side of their mouth, and I want you to put it in the palm of my hand. And then I want you to look with your microscope at the cells in the palm of my hand and the foam from their mouth. And they said, we're not doing that, Dr. Lake. Well, you'll, you'll catch the plague. You'll die. He said, oh, I'm not going to die. I'm living by the law of life in Christ. They put his hand under the microscope and put that foam onto his hand. And when they did, they pulled back from the microscope and said, Dr. Lake, we're looking at it. And when the cells of the plague touch the skin of your hand they are dying under the microscope please tell us what is that he said my brothers it's the law of life in Christ hallelujah because when the eternal life of God fills up your body it's stronger than any disease it's stronger than cancer it's stronger than glaucoma it's stronger than deafness it is stronger than COPD Every knee must bow to the mighty power of God. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Woo, glory to God. See, here's the thing. When you get filled up with eternal life, see, because people think eternal life is something you live after you die. It's not. Eternal, it's, eternal life is a substance. It's like water in a water bottle. That when you get saved, he pours his spirit into your body. The word zoe in the Greek is the life of God. The life of God is a substance. It's an anointing. The word anointing just means the smeared on, rubbed on power of God. The zoe life of God is a substance. I'll show it to you from the word. And every one of us here that's filled with the spirit, filled with it. Every one of us. That's how you can just be a believer. You're not even a pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, prophet. But you can lay your hands on the sick and they'll recover. You know why? You're filled with that substance of the Holy Ghost, the life of Christ. When Jesus was on his way, Mark chapter 5, to pray for Jairus' daughter, 
who was about to die, the Bible says. There was a woman, you remember the story, who had an issue of blood. And what did she do? She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. So what'd she do? Press through the crowd. And she pressed. People were trying to get to him. And she pushed past him. And with that dedication, that faithfulness, she, he didn't even know she was there, by the way. He, she reached out and she just touched the hem of his garment. I could preach a whole message just on that. And that if you studied the rabbis and the garments that they wore and the robes that they wore, that the names of God were stitched on the hem of their garment. And when she reached out, she touched the name that's above every name. I feel the Holy Ghost. But when she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says, he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, what? Look at all these people. They're all trying to touch you. What do you mean, who touched me? He said, no, no, somebody just touched me by faith. Why? You know what he said? I felt virtue flow out of my body. What you got to see here is this. When he touched her, when she touched him, she made by her faith a withdrawal on the eternal life that was inside his body. You read Mark chapter 5 for yourself. He said, I felt virtue go out of my body. The virtue she pulled out of him was eternal substance. It was divine healing virtue. And when it came into her body, it drove that internal bleeding out of her life and destroyed that disease. And the Bible says she was in a bad state because she had spent all she had on medical help, doctors and nurses. And the Bible says she got nothing better but grew all the worse. Hallelujah. See, it's nothing wrong with doctors and nurses. There's nothing wrong with medical science. There's nothing wrong with medical help. But understand, never confuse medical help with divine healing. Because they're not the same thing. We thank God for technological advancements. We thank God that medications have been developed and half the church would be dead if they hadn't. But understand something. When you receive healing naturally, that's not divine healing. God does not need a man-made substance to supplement his supernatural power. When he heals you, he can heal you by himself. He can heal you with a word. He can heal you with a touch. He can heal you with a breath. He doesn't need Oh, yeah, she spent. See, here's the thing. If God's you, I just want you to remember this for the rest of your life. If God uses doctors and nurses and medicine as a form of divine healing, here's a case where he failed this woman. Because she spent all she had on doctors and nurses. And if he would do it for others but not for her, does that mean he loves others more than this woman? No, God doesn't do that. And let me tell you why he doesn't. Because the Bible says he's a jealous God. We dealt with this. He wants all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. It's not Christ in chemotherapy. You don't have to shout me down, but I'm going to keep preaching. Because in, in our generation, we've mixed the two. I want to give honor to God. I did 17 weeks of chemotherapy, and I came in. Why did God get honor for that? Does he get glory, or does the hospital get it? Does he get it, or did the poison in your veins get it? What gets the glory? Christ or chemo? Which one? I'm not condemning people that have taken it. I'm saying don't call it divine healing because it's not the same thing. If you've got medicine, I'm not condemning you. I'm saying don't look at that and say, that's the power of God touching my body. No, that's not the power of God. That's the power of medical technological advancement. We're not against it. We don't tell people to stop taking their medication. We just tell you that's not divine healing. When God wants to heal, he heals all by himself. When God touches you, he does it in a way he gets all the glory. He gets all the honor, and he gets all the praise. Oh, yeah, all the praise. And when she touched him, virtue came out. And that virtue got into her. So write this in your notes. If you're taking notes, eternal life is transferable. Yeah. 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 Woo, glory to God. That makes me want to run. <laughs> eternal life is transferable. I'll show you another verse to prove it. Acts chapter 3. 
Peter and John going up to the a temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour of the day, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And the Bible says they got to the gate, and there was a lame man there begging for alms. I heard one preacher say he was looking for alms and got legs. <laughs> Must have been from the south, had a bad accent. And there he is, can't walk, lame, begging for money, help me. And Peter turned to him, what did he say? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Which means, let's stop here for a second, which means Peter not only had something in him, he knew he had something in him. Not only did he know he had it, he knew he could give it away at will. And when he transferred that power, that that man's legs would not be lame any longer. That when he touched him, hallelujah, that that substance of the Holy Ghost would get into that man's body and make him whole by the power of God. That's why the Bible says that the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you and quickens, glory to God, your mortal body quickens startles makes alive that's what that word means I mean, we don't use that word anymore it's king james i didn't arrive in montana and the pastor say how you doing brother I said i feel quickened brother hallelujah <laughs> you know <laughs> we don't use that word anymore but that's what it means to startle or to make alive you ever had something shock you and then your adrenaline started pumping like oh man you feel like you're ready to run a race after that one time we were staying, I'll tell you, when, you're a, when you are an evangelist, you wake up in so many different cities, and you have, it takes 30 seconds to remember where you are. Well, my wife and I, we had, I think we only had one child at the time, but we were staying in a hotel room, and in the middle of the night, now I woke up to use the restroom, and we don't turn the lights anymore, we use our flashlight on our phone, and so I'm coming out half asleep in a stupor, stumbling through our hotel room, and I came out to where the entryway was, where the entrance to the bathroom, and when I got out there to look in the bathroom, I pu pulled my light up, and there's a big old guy standing, standing in our hotel room. <laughs> big old guy. And I thought, I mean, I was, I was half asleep. But when I, I don't know how he got in. I didn't know anything. When I saw that guy standing in my hotel room, got my baby back there, my wife, me and my fist pulled back like quick, like, like instinct. I squared those hips, buddy. I know how to throw a punch. I was ready to knock this man. <laughs> I was going to bury him on the backside of a desert and pr pray and ask God to forgive me later. <laughs> I pulled that fist back, and just as I was launching a punch, I remembered at the last minute that the door to the bathroom had a floor-to-ceiling mirror on it. <laughs> I was looking at myself in the middle of the night. Thought, who's this chubby guy standing in here? <laughs> Knock you out. <laughs> Getting in my room. I mean, and I was half asleep. And when I saw myself, not realizing it was me, I mean, adrenaline was pumping through my body. I was ready to go to war. I was like going into the UFC octagon. I was like, let's bring it, bring it. Let's get it on. <laughs> I, and I was fun. Then you got to explain to your wife why you're pacing through the room, you know, upset about everything. What's wrong? Nothing. I'll be back to bed in a minute. I'm just... And what happened? I was in the midst of a drunken, not drunk, I wasn't drunk, but you know, you wake up and you got that sleep drunk, you don't know where you are. I was in the middle of that, and now one thing shocked me, hit me, and now I'm wide awake and alive. Now that was just natural adrenaline. Imagine the Holy Ghost who raised Christ from the dead. Here's a man whose body is not only dead, but decomposing. Three days in the tomb. Oh, hallelujah. Three days. But really, if you want to talk about it, he didn't even need a full three days. Jesus is so powerful, he didn't even need a full three days. The Bible says he died on the evening of the first day, dead the whole second day, and they came early before the dawn on the third day, and the stone was already rolled away. He's so powerful, he didn't even need a full 36 hours or whatever it is. I can't even count anymore. 72? What is it? Somebody help me. I was homeschooled. One. I can't even count to 10 unless my shoes are off. Plus, I got. I was preaching one time at a youth conference. I told them. They, they laughed about this. But I said, Jesus, you know, the reason he didn't have to buy a grave, he borrowed one. He, didn't, he wasn't going to need it. 
He just looked at the disciples and said, jump on gravebnb.com and just rent me something for like the next three days. Because the grave couldn't hold him. Wasn't big enough to hold him. Death couldn't lock him down. Think about that. Death couldn't lock him down. People think Jesus got murdered. He didn't get murdered. You can't murder the master. I said, you can't murder the master. You think they didn't try to murder him before? They picked up stones to stone him. How many stones hit him? Not one. Th big, listen, big men heard him blaspheming, got so mad, a mob of men formed and ran him up a hill to the edge of a cliff, ready to push him off into the city below and plummet to his death. And the Bible says right as they're getting ready to do it, he just passed through the crowd. <laughs> you know why? Because you can't murder the master. I mean, he went to matrix mode, went to bullet time and just passed on through the crowd. <laughs> Just pass through the crowd. See, they tried to murder him before, but they couldn't murder him because you can't murder him. And that's why he said about himself, he said, I've got the power to lay my life down and I've got the power to take it back up again. See, if they took his life from him, he wouldn't have had the power to take it back up. He said, I lay it down as a sacrifice for my children. And if I can lay it down, I can pick it back up again. And he had power over death death, power over the grave, power over sickness, power over bondage, and every wicked thing. Christ is victorious by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Christ is victorious. Because he is, we are. Amen. That's why the Bible says it. First John, as he is, so are we in this world. Not as he was, as he is. Currently. That's why when I see people wearing a, they got a cross on a necklace with Jesus hanging on it on the necklace. I say, buddy, that's the old version. There's a new one out. I got to get you the new one. <laughs> see, he ain't on the cross anymore. He's off the cross. You know, I feel like some people feel like they, they accepted a baby Jesus into their heart. Like he's in a manger in their heart. Swaddling clothes. Goo-gooing and gagaing. No, he's not. You don't have a 12-year-old Jesus in the temple asking questions living inside of you. Some little underformed Jesus trying to get, you know, increase in wisdom and stature. That's not who's in you today. That's not who you're united with. You're not united with a 30-year-old carpenter. I go into some pastor's office, I travel, they got a plaque on their desk. My boss is a Jewish carpenter. Please. Please. You're going to dumb down the king of kings and the lord of lords to a carpenter? He wasn't no carpenter. That's not what God sent him to be. He was the king of all kings. The lord? You think he's up in heaven making rocking chairs? Doing trim work? God's pointing it out. We need some more crown molding on this gate over here. Jesus, if you get a ladder. Not a carpenter. He's, he's the son of David. But think about this. I don't have a bloody, bruised, and broken Jesus that I'm united with. Because that's over. I'll give you another one. I don't have an in a grave, wrapped in grave clothes Jesus that I'm united with. I don't have a Jesus that descended into the lower parts of the earth that's down in Abraham's bosom. That's not who I'm identified with. I don't even have, catch this now, even the one who was resurrected from the dead that walked with his disciples, that's not even the Jesus that I'm united with. But if you really want to know who it is that we serve and who it is that we're like, you've got to read John's description on the Isle of Patmos from the book of Revelation. He said, I heard a voice that was speaking unto me. And when I turned around to see who it was, I saw a man whose hair was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. Out of his mouth proceeded a two-edged sword. His voice thundered like many ocean waves. His skin was bronze like it had been refined in the fire. He saw the glorified Jesus that's full of power and full of glory. He's on the throne, and you're united with him. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Woo, 
glory to God. That's the Jesus we serve. Demons are peeing their pants. He carries power and authority in his hand. When he speaks, the thunders roll. He's powerful. And he is our Savior, our Lord, the soon coming King. I don't think people talk about that enough. It's coming soon. There's people that aren't ready, living their life like there's no destiny, like there's no future, wasting their life in sin and in death when Jesus is coming soon. I said he's coming soon. Amen. And if we're not ready to see him, we'll miss the boat. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. Victory has been transferred to us through the work of Christ. I'll catch you with this. I'm going to minister to you in a minute. You can come back to the keys if you want. I'm getting ready to pray for God's people. I tell you, I love you, man. I'm so happy to be here with you. God's moving in this church. He's going to touch your family. He's going to touch your children. He's going to touch your grandchildren. Yokes are being destroyed. Burdens are being lifted. God's touching his people. This stirred me up. We traveled with Brother R.W. Shambot for about 15, 20 years under the tent. Some of y'all may still remember him. He's gone on to be with the Lord. And he's a powerful man of God. He's a tent revivalist and uh, saw many, many miracles, saw so many come to Christ in his ministry and his life. And um, he was ministering one time, and I heard him tell this, and I'm going to relate it to you. He said he was reading through the Word, and it really bothered him to get this thought of more than a conqueror. How many have ever read that and thought to yourself, that, that's kind of weird, because if you're the conqueror, you're on the top, yeah. and there's nobody higher than the conqueror. Right. So how can you be more than a conqueror? And he said the Lord almost like showed him like it was a, an illustration for his spirit. He said, imagine, if you will, a boxing match, a title bout for the belt, and out come the two fighters primed and ready to go at the top of their game, ready to rock. And they come in and the bell rings and they square off against each other and they start trading punches and they go round after round. Blows are landing. There's cuts on the forehead, cuts on the cheeks. And you can see they're just going hard at it. But finally, the one who would become the champion lands that final blow and knocks his opponent out and the bell rings and the place goes wild and the re- they lift up his arm. He is the champion. And they bring over the big old belt and put it on his shoulder. And there he is, walking around the ring with the belt on his shoulder. But because you know as well as I do, they don't really fight for a belt. They fight for a check. And so when the belt has gone back into its case, they bring him his check. There it is, $30 million for the title bout. And he's the champion with the check. But he's bloody. He's cut on his face. Nose is broken and crooked. He's tired. His muscles are sore. He's cramping. His head's pounding. He goes back, gets a shower, gets into his street clothes, jumps into his car, and heads home. And when he opens the door, his wonderful wife is standing there waiting for her champion. And he walks into that house, and he looks at her in the face, and she does one thing, holds out her hand, and the check goes into her hand. He's a conqueror. She's more than a conqueror because she She didn't have to get bloody. She didn't have to get punched. She didn't have to get cut. She didn't have to get bruised. But she gets to spend the check. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror. You didn't have to be crucified. You didn't have to be whipped. You didn't have to be pierced. You didn't have to be beaten. But he has given you the victory. Because of his redemptive act, you are victorious. You are victorious. You are victorious. If you believe it, stand on your feet, clap your hands, and give God all the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody just shout, I am victorious. I'm victorious by the blood of Jesus. More than a conqueror. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. You see that? Wherever he is. See, that's the key. We take him with us. 
wherever we go. Where you go, the Spirit of the Lord is. There are so many people that are waiting on a revival. Let me give you something to confess. I am a revival. I am a revival. Wherever you go, the spirit of revival is with you. It's in you. Eternal life. Power of God. It is in you. It is in you. Just lift those hands. Begin to thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. It's new every morning. <laughs> Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Wonderful Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. There's nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. I'm going to tell you, this is the hour to be on fire. This is the hour to catch the spirit of revival in your heart. This is the hour to press in because time's running out. This is the time to be equipped for the purpose God's given you. Let me tell you, time is so short right now. Jesus is coming so soon that there's not time left to mess around. We've got to press in and reap the harvest of souls that God's put into our hands. There's a work to be done. I said, there's a work to be done. There's a work to be done. There's a work to be done. <laughs> Glory to God. There is a work to be done. And God's going to anoint every one of us to do it. I said, he's going to anoint every one of us to do it. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Something supernatural is going to take place for every one of us. <sighs> Just take a minute in his presence. Hmm. See, he's moving right now. Before we do anything, he's already moving. He's already touching people. He's ministering to his people right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, press into his anointing right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. We give you glory. You're wonderful. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. You're the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. You're the soon coming king. You're the deliverer. <laughs> You're the helper. There's none like you. Not in heaven, not in earth. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Shh. Glory to God. Lift your hand, sister. That's the anointing of God upon you. Ha, 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 ha. He even lifts off you tonight a spirit of heaviness. Oh, and a new joy of the Holy Ghost comes upon you this night. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, he'll turn your mourning into dancing. Shh. Turn your sorrows into joy. <laughs> Glory to God. From this night forward, new level of joy, new level of peace, healing virtue. Somebody needs a touch in your body. I want you to get ready. I feel this tonight. I feel to lay my hands on those who need a touch in their body. That, uh, that divine healing anointing, that virtue from heaven we've been speaking about, God will touch you. God will heal you. God will give you a miracle by his spirit. He will do what he said he would do. Maybe you're watching online and you say, I need a miracle. I need God to touch me tonight. Press in with us right here in Billings, Montana. God will touch you wherever you're watching from. He'll touch you right in your living room while you're driving your car. He'll come where you are and touch you right now. The spirit of God knows no limitations, knows no boundaries. <laughs> He'll touch you right where you are. There's no distance in the anointing. Jesus could send a word and the people would be healed where he sent the word. Same thing can happen for us. That as we send the word, speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. That's the key. Speak the word only. Thank you, Lord. 
I'm just waiting on the Lord. Lift your hands and thank Him. Fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Come upon Him tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. My brother, can I speak to you? Lift your hands. Come out if you would, if you don't mind. I'll tell you, all is not lost. There's even some things that have discouraged you. You thought, well, maybe I made too many mistakes now. Maybe, maybe I've gone one step too far now. And the Lord says, there'll never be a time in your life where you've gone too far that I can't help you. My arm is long enough to save, long enough to deliver. And though people, and listen, everybody, the Bible says every person has made mistakes. All were born in sin. All were shaped in iniquity. And so there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. But the key is you got to be in Christ Jesus. The Lord said, I'm going to help you. And though, though you thought things may have been lost forever or things have been destroyed beyond repair, they have not, says the Lord. For I can save and heal and deliver from any situation. I can even erase things in the past that others would use to judge you. I can even erase records, says the Lord. I can even, I can even cause records that were set up against you to be erased, says God. Ha, 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 ha. I can do it in such a way, says the Lord, that even you can have jobs that you wouldn't have been able to get before because I can cause things to disappear. I am the great heavenly hacker. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord can work on your behalf and make all things new. And I tell you right now, you've not gone too far where God can't help you. Don't ever allow the devil to make you feel hopeless or like there's nowhere else to go forward for God always has a plan to bless you always has a plan to touch you. And I'm going to pray for you tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost that whatever it was that the enemy used to destroy your life, it comes to an end tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for this man. And I'll tell you this, God's going to use you in his kingdom to be a mighty force for the kingdom of God. <laughs> and you're going to have a, such a testimony. And I'll tell you what God's going to use it to do. People that they thought they'd gone too far. People that they thought they'd never be able to come back into what God had planned for them. Your testimony is going to encourage them. And then the anointing God's putting on your life tonight is going to bring them right back to where they need to be, the kingdom of God. So get ready. For tonight, God not only sets you free, but he's working behind the scenes on your behalf. And he's going to work to help you. And those things that you thought would stack up against you are not going to stack up against you in Jesus' mighty name. Freedom from the Holy Ghost tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I lay my hands on my brother. And in Jesus' name, I take authority over every attack of the enemy that was sent against his life to destroy him. And from this night forward, I rebuke it by the power of God. Loose your grip and let him go tonight. And Lord, we lose joy. I lose freedom. In Jesus' name, I command every prison door to swing wide open by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that you would even go and erase everything that would stand against him. In Jesus' mighty name, open the way in front of him and use him mightily for your glory from this night. In Jesus' mighty name, and if you believe it, my friends, shout aloud, amen, in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. 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 I said, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just take one more moment and give him praise. He's moving tonight. I'm telling you, he's touching us. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Worship him. Thank him. My buddy right here. Wait, what's your name? Christian, can I pray for you? Come, please come. Glad you're here. Thank you for coming. I'm going to pray tonight that God would put a mighty anointing of his spirit upon your life. And every plan of the devil to destroy you is being 
taken out by God tonight. For God, hear me, you said Christian. Let me tell you, that's a perfect name. For God has a plan to use your life. The devil had a plan to destroy you, but he's failed. God's got a plan to use you for his glory. God will lift you up head and shoulders above the rest. And he'll make you a beacon of hope to those that have no hope. For tonight, God restores your hope. Tonight, God restores your joy. Tonight, God restores your peace. And everything that the devil used to take those things from you, it is leaving tonight in Jesus' name. And a new strength is coming upon your life to serve the Lord with boldness and gladness. With boldness and gladness. People will look and say, what in the world happened to him? What took place in his life? How in the world? That's a turnaround. But let me tell you, it's because God has a plan to bless you. Lift your hands and to the Lord. That's your sign of surrender. Amen. Not that he's holding a gun to you, but I'm just saying surrender to the Lord. And I lay my hands upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I take authority over this spirit of heaviness that has tried to set in on your life. It will not prevail in Jesus' name. For the Lord loves you, Christian. He has already won the victory for you. And now he's going to use you for his glory. Because you're a man of greatness. There's greatness on the inside of you. There's anointing that God's put inside of you. And God's going to use you in these final moments of time. And so I now take authority over this attack of the devil that's been sent against your life. And I command it to leave you tonight and loose its grip in Jesus' name. Go by the power of God. Be set free by the mighty name of Jesus. And from this night forward, I thank you, Lord, that he walks in a new freedom, walks in a new joy, a new peace, and deliverance by the power of God in Jesus' wonderful name, in Jesus' wonderful name. Now, the Lord's going to speak to you because he just spoke to me, and I want you to hear this very clearly. I've never even said this to anybody in my entire life or ministry, but the Lord just had me say it to you. He said there's even been some things that you're going to have, songs I'm talking about, music, that you're going to have to delete from your playlist and delete from your phone and streaming services because there are, understand this, music's a powerful thing. And there are some people that are anointed to write for God like David. Others are demonically inspired and anointed by demons and by the devil. And there's an anointing, negative or positive, on music. There is an anointing. And you've got to guard your spirit, says the Lord, because there are some things that have come across your ears that the enemy would use to actually destroy you. And God's going to show you, and the anointing will show you, you'll be led by the Spirit, but you'll have to make some deletions, if you will, some deletes. On your phone, you'll have to delete some things, and there's some things you'll not have to stream anymore because the power of God is going to use you, Christian, in a mighty way. But the, you've got to cut the fuel of the enemy out of your life in Jesus' name. And God just gives you one little adjustment, and there it is. And God's going to use you and touch you in a mighty way. Is this your mom and dad behind you? Your father. And then what's your name, ma'am? Heather, lift your hands. The power of God has come upon you tonight. There's some things that have weighed heavy on your heart, heavy on your spirit. And it's like you've, it seems like it's been a battle, a battle, a battle. But I'll tell you this. The Lord is going to make all things new. And he's going to bring a peace and he's going to bring a synergy like you've never felt before. And what you've prayed for is going to come to pass. And the battles come to an end in Jesus' name. The fighting, the bickering, the complaining, things that have just really bothered you in your mind and your spirit coming to an end in Jesus' name. And I know this is a great man here because I already prayed for him the other day. God's using you as well. This, and I told you, remember, God's going to bless your whole family. Amen. He's going to bless your whole family. And you got this is a good son right here, Christian. God's going to use him for his glory. And so now, Lord, I pray from this night forward that the mighty power of your spirit come upon this man. Lord, by your anointing, open doors for him. Use him with his friends. Use him at school. Use him wherever he goes. Let him be a carrier of your presence and your power and your anointing. And I thank you, Lord, for his life. Thank you that you've preserved him from death. Thank you that you've preserved him from every attack of the enemy. He's alive and well to give praises unto God. And from this night forward, he'll never be the same. In the wonderful name of Jesus, be filled tonight with the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, fire of God come upon him tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Before you go, i got a gift for you I want to give you. Amen. Lift your hands all over this place. Now, if you need a touch in your body, this is how I'm going to pray tonight. If you need a healing touch, 
in your body, you need a miracle, I want you to come to God's altar. I'm going to lay my hands as they worship on you. Just like the Bible says, they will lay their hands on the sick. I want you to get out of your seat and come now. And before we do anything else, we're going to minister to you. If you need a miracle, you need a healing, maybe you're standing in uh, the gap for somebody that needs a healing. Maybe you're standing in for a friend, a brother, sister, mother, something like that. Stand and receive for them. But by faith, get ready to receive what God has for you in Jesus' name. Somebody say this with me. My God is my healer. My God is my deliverer. My God sets me free by his supernatural power. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now just lift your hands. Those of you that are still in your seats, you can be seated if you'd like. And just stretch your hands towards God's people and join your faith with ours. The Bible says, is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church who will anoint them with oil and lay their hands upon them. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up in Jesus' name. So tonight we declare that as we pray for God's people, that precious anointing of the Holy Spirit that's in this house is coming upon every one of these. And we thank you, Lord. Miracles are taking place for your people. Touch us, Lord, tonight by your power. I, I speak to every attack of the devil that's tried to set up in their body. And I rebuke it in Jesus' name and command it to leave and never come back by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, as we obey your word, we thank you that you will come through as you always do, for you're the healer, and you've already purchased that healing for us through Jesus Christ. We give you glory. Brother Paul, worship if you will. Lift your hands all over this house. How Magnify the Lord. great is our God. Sing with me how great the Holy Ghost. Come upon him is our God. I will stand virtue in your body. And all will see how great. How and all will see how great. How great. They're coming to an end. God. For a new joy comes upon you tonight. And a new How peace comes upon you tonight. And I hear the Lord say, I love you. I love God. you. I'm caring for you. I'm taking Sing care of with you. Me. And you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. You're going to be all right, says the Lord. In Jesus' and name. We'll see My brother. Touch him, Lord Jesus. I rebuke this sickness and disease. God. Every attack of the enemy sent to destroy him from this night. Go by the power of God. Make him whole in Jesus' name. Worship him. Worship him. Lord, we loose the anointing of God. There it is. Receive a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Be healed. Be healed. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Touch her tonight by your spirit. But I lose healing virtue by the power of God. And in the name of Jesus, every attack of the enemy sent to destroy her. I come in to loose its grip and let her go tonight. Be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every wicked thing sent to destroy it must loose you tonight and let you go by the power of the Holy Ghost, fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. By the power of God, be made whole. <laughs> be made whole. Be made whole. Roto Rama Rekesh to say darkness healing virtue. Hide its face. Power of God. Oh, hallelujah. I rest Lord, on touch of the night. Fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Grace. Divine healing virtue. And Flow and through her body tonight. Make her whole. Stormy I curse gale. sickness and disease, every attack of the enemy. My Go by the power of God. Be made whole now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. My anchor holds within the Fire of God. Come Christ every sickness, every disease. Cornerstone, the weak made strong in the same love. Through the storm, He and let you go in Jesus' name. Free, free by the power of God. Free by the power of God. Oh Christ, fresh fire of the Holy Ghost, come upon Savior's love, through the storm, be made whole. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, Lord of all. 
I just felt to do this before we do anything else. I want Brother Danny and Brother David and Brother Eric to come here and pastor. The Lord just showed me to do something, and I'm going to do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whew, glory to God. I feel the anointing. Lift your hands all over this house. <clears throat> come stand here if you would. Whew. Pastor, come stand right here in the middle. I'm going to do this prophetically. You can turn and face me. Hold your arms out like this. For the Lord's getting ready to do something new. He's getting something. I'm talking about victories like you've never seen. I mean victories like you've never seen. Victories like you've never seen. <laughs> Glory to God. And in the Old Testament, as the prophet of God held his arms up over the battlefield, the victory was won. The victory was won. The victory was won. But you can only hold your arms up for so long. And so God called men alongside him to hold up his arms. And by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I want you three to just grab a hold of his arms and just hold on to your pastor, the man of God of this house. For God's anointed even the three of you and others in this house to stand in a place of victory. For this house is getting ready to see victory after victory after victory. And we're going to rejoice and shout and praise and dance as we say. You say, well, we've seen some wonderful things, and now we're standing in a place where there's no even pressure of debt. In it. But that's just the beginning. That's just the positioning. God's putting you in position for what he's about to do. And from this night, hear it, from this night, there's a mighty fire of the Holy Ghost that's coming upon every one of you. I tell you, get ready for it. Ha, 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 ha. And this is a sign unto you. Every person sitting here in God's house, just stretch your hands. Because I tell you, this same anointing is coming on every one of you. There's a unity in this church that's going to push us forward. And I tell you, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Rosto, marake, roto pa regesti, roma kegria do ropo stana. Shembrando requeste se, vrava romon de crise bravando no. And the Lord says that there will be mountains move out of your way that hadn't moved for any pastor previously. Things that had never happened. Hear what I say. Things that had never happened in Billings, Montana. Things that have never taken place before. Things that churches could never get going. Holy Ghost churches that lost the fire. Seeker sensitive churches that gave up on God. Things that have never happened by the power of the Holy Ghost are going to happen through this house. For God's going to lift you up by his mighty right hand as you listen to his voice, as you follow his lead, and you'll see victory after victory after victory victory after victory for a new fire of God's spirit comes upon you this night fire of the Holy Ghost come upon him fire of God come upon him tonight fire of the Holy Ghost fire of God fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire oh parete fresh fire of the Holy Ghost <laughs> oh glory to God Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come upon him tonight. This church is a church on fire with the strength of God. Get ready. Get ready, says the Lord, for increase like you've never seen. Increase like you've never known. For I'm the one that lifts up, says God. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. Promotion comes from me, says the Lord. I decide who will rise and who will fall. And there's a rising up. There's a raising up in this house. For you've honored my anointing. You've honored my glory. You've honored my word. You've honored my spirit. And now I honor you and lift your head and shoulders above the rest. And miracle signs and wonders will begin to manifest. And people will come from miles around to see what God's doing right here at Bethany Church. And I tell you, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. I'll fill your mouth with laughter. I'll fill your tongue with singing. And all of the strength and the pressure that the devil tried to lay on you comes off by the power of God. My yoke is easy. My burden is light, says the Lord. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. By the power of the Holy Ghost. 
<laughs> Lift your hands now, every one of you. A fresh touch. Now that's the man of God that God placed in this house. But see, he raises us all up to stand behind the vision. And there's individual anointings that God's placed on every one of us. Danny, I tell you, there's a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost that's on your life that you've cultivated. A sensitivity to know and hear His voice and to feel the moving of His Spirit. God said, because you've been yielded, because you've been sensitive to my Spirit and my voice, you've never grown callous to the flow of the Holy Ghost or to the moving of my Spirit. You've desired it. You've called out for it. And in prayer, you've cried out for it. Said, Lord, let us see that again. Let me be used in that way. God said, because you had a heart for it and a desire, I'm going to use you in these last days and to see a mighty moving of my Holy Spirit for a fresh impartation of the Holy Ghost comes upon you this night. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same from this night forward. <laughs> You'll never be the same. For tonight, I set a fire in your belly that will never go out. A fresh fire of my spirit, says the Lord. Rotekima rando roshte sehe. Ha ha Eric, like a joyful bull. That's what I heard the Lord say. I, I see it. It's like could bust through any wall and laugh about it when he's done. There's a joy in your strength and a strength in your joy, says the Lord. For you're not just joyful with a natural joy. It's the joy of the Lord. And it's your strength. A bastion of strength, says the Lord. Ha, 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 Oh, yeah. And the joy of the Lord will be on you in your ministry and follow you as you minister. And the joy of the Lord will be prevalent. You'll see it happen. It'll flow right out of your belly and it'll get on to others. And you'll see that flow of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that strength, God will use you like a bulldozer to break right through every wall. To break right through every hindrance. To break right through every wicked thing. And God gifts you in that way. Ha, ha, ha. In Jesus' name. Fresh anointing tonight. Shh, of the Holy Ghost. Get ready. Here's a new strength. A new strength. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. I do this by the Holy Ghost and not in the flesh, because in the flesh I wouldn't mess with you. But by the Holy Ghost, hear me, Brother Eric, so that you never forget this night or this word from the Lord. The Lord said you'll never forget. It's a violent anointing. It's a violent strength that comes upon you. Like a New Testament Samson, says the Lord. And you'll never forget it. Power of God come upon him tonight. You'll never forget it from this night. Ha, 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 ha. Shh. It's a strength from God. Brother David, God's given you a mind. And it's a mind of Christ, but it's such a detail-oriented, very sharp gift that God's given you. And God said, I'm going to show you things that no one's ever seen before. You'll have revelations of my word that I'll show you because of your dedication to study to show yourself approved. And you'll begin to see things, and I'll give you, I'll open the eyes of your understanding, and I will give you deep revelations of my word that'll set the captive free. And you'll begin to see things in the spirit realm that you've never seen before. And you'll get up in the middle of your own house while reading the word at the table and start dancing around your own table. It'll bring so much joy into your spirit, what I'm about to show you from my word, says the Lord. You'll be like Jeremiah who said in Jeremiah 15, 16 that I found your word and I did eat it and it became the joy and rejoicing of my soul. Ha, ha, ha. And as I show you my word, says the Lord, the joy of my spirit will explode from you and you'll rejoice and you'll jump and shout and dance to see what you've seen because I'm going to use it to set the captives free from this night. I open your eyes and your understanding. Ha, ha, ha. They be enlightened tonight. The fire of the Holy Ghost come upon him from this night. And you'll see what nobody's seen. Where'd Brother Danny go? There he is. Now look at that. The sensitivity to the mighty movement of the Holy Ghost. The strength and joy of the Holy Ghost. 
and the precision of the revelation of God's word. All three of these things are backing up the vision of this house. Hear what I'm saying? The sensitivity to the Holy Ghost, the joy and strength of the Holy Ghost, the precision of God's word. And with these three things, you cannot fail. The sensitivity to the move of the Holy Ghost, the joy and strength of the Holy Ghost, and the precision of the word in the Holy Ghost. Somebody lift your hands in this house and begin to thank God that this church is going to another level by the power of the Holy Ghost. That from this night, things are turning in your favor. And that God is going to do things for you that, he's ne that people have never seen in this region. And it'll be a testimony under the goodness of God. Get ready to rejoice. I said, get ready to rejoice. Get ready to rejoice. Lift your hands all over this house and just begin to give God thanks and give him praise for he is good. <laughs> he is good. I mean, if you believe it, clap your hands and give God glory. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Whew. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You know, when God gets ready to bless you, he does so in such a way that it will be visible by all. You know why he does that? Because he wants others to know what you just had happen was not natural. It was supernatural. Because as we've been preaching, when they see that, they can only attribute it to God. Didn't come from a man. Didn't come from a corporation. Didn't come from a government. Came from God himself. I think to myself about Peter in Luke chapter 5. He's cleaning his nets. He's in his boat. He's been fishing all night. And Jesus is teaching on the shore. And while he does, he just walks over and jumps into Peter's boat. Says, hey, do me a favor. Push out a little bit. Let me use your boat like a platform and use the beach like an amphitheater. You know, Peter could have said, hey, this is my boat. Trespassing. Get out of my boat. I've been fishing all night. I'm tired. I want to go home. No, nope. he didn't have a response. He just obeyed. Pushed back and let Jesus use his boat. Notice what he did. This is even before he was a disciple. You notice what he did. He took what was his and said, Jesus, it's yours. Oh, hallelujah. But after he did that, notice, you cannot sacrifice like that to God and not receive a divine thank you. Hallelujah. And when Jesus was done teaching, he said, now, push out into the deep and cast down or let down your nets for a catch. Well, what did he say? Well, Lord, listen, we fished all night. And we caught nothing. Now, if anybody knew where to catch the fish, Peter did. He was a professional fisherman. He said, we caught nothing. But at your word. Oh, hallelujah. And he let him down. And the Bible says, what happened? Such a catch of fish jumped in the net that the boat began to sink. Oh, hallelujah. So what did Peter do? He called out for his friends who were close by in another boat. The Bible says they started throwing the excess in the friend's boat until that boat began to sink. Let me encourage you tonight, as you sow into the kingdom, you're going to be so weighted down with the blessings of God that you're not going to be in a place where your needs are just met. God's going to take you into the overflow so that people that are connected to your life will also be weighed down with just the excess of what God's about to do for you. I'm telling you, get ready. Because when people see the goodness of God that's upon your life, it will be supernatural. Somebody shout supernatural. supernatural. And it was a sign. It was more than enough for Peter. It was more than enough for his friends. Catch this. They didn't do anything for Jesus. That would bring them the blessing. Only reason they got blessed, they knew Peter. You got friends that are getting ready to get blessed just because they know you. Shh, hallelujah. Because <laughs> God's going to make you a source of blessing. And we're going to give you an opportunity to do what the Holy Spirit has put on your heart. And sow a seed by the power of God and by faith to see what God's placed in your heart come to pass and a harvest come back. How many could believe that this would be the year debts are canceled in Jesus' name? How many believe it? Do you believe this would be the year credit card debts paid off, student loan debts paid off, cars are paid off, houses paid off? How many believe this could be the year God would do it? How does it come? By faithfulness and obedience. That's why we pray. 
So we're going to pray in just a moment. And as we pray, the Lord's going to speak to each and every one of you. And Pastor Jordan's going to come and pray. And I'm telling you, as we do what the Lord's speaking to us to do, get ready for an overflowing harvest. Can I give you one quick testimony? God spoke to my wife and I. We knew we were expanding. God opened all these doors to go on television, which we're going to do before the end of this year. We're getting ready to touch three continents of the world. Think of this. 80 plus million homes every single week with the gospel. And so as we're doing that, getting ready, well, we knew we needed a space. We knew we needed a TV studio to film all the broadcasts. In the middle of the lockdown, in the middle of the pandemic, when everything else is being cut off, we got a word. This is so powerful. My father, who was preaching in February in Florida, he says to us, he's sitting on my couch. He said, you know, when I was in the service last night, I meant to tell you this, and I never did. He said, the Lord shows me you're going to get a building soon. I said, really? And my wife said, really? He said, yeah, I see it in the vision. And she ran over with a pen and paper and handed my dad a pen and paper. She said, sketch what you see. Sketch what you see in the spirit. He starts drawing. He starts drawing this building where the palm trees were, where the windows were, drew everything. And he handed it to us. He said, this is what I saw in the spirit. And he said, for some reason, I couldn't see the second story in the spirit. He said, but this is what I saw. So we hung it on the fridge. We said, that's going to be our faith. We're going to stand on that and believe God. That's our building in Jesus' name. Well, we went with a realtor, looked at about seven, eight different properties. None of them looked like what my dad drew. And then they said, well, there is one more that we could go look at, but I don't think, you know, the pricing may not be updated. It looked a lot cheaper. And so he said, well, we'll talk to the owner. We pull into the parking lot. It looks exactly like what my dad drew on the paper. We pull in the trees are in the exact same places. The building. And he said, I couldn't see the second story in the spirit. We look up. There is no second story. It's a one-story building. And there it is. We go in. And he said, well, I don't think the pricing. The pricing's not. All the other places was about $30 to $35 a square foot. This place had been listed. So we talked to the owner. What are you going to do it for? And what did he give it to us for per square foot? $13 per square foot. Less than half. Come in. So nobody even knew. None of our partners knew we were doing it. Nobody knew we were getting a building. We were doing it by faith. In the midst of the pandemic, the lockdown, I had no meetings on the books. We were home broadcasting every single night. Nobody knew. One man, now think of how God takes care of you. One man who owns like 15 Waffle Houses felt in his spirit to write a check. He wrote one check, sent it to the ministry. It paid the building for the full year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. See, because God knows what you need. And God puts you in a place of overflow. And I'm going to tell you, God will do the same thing for you. There's nothing hard for the God you serve. How does it work? It's a system of seed time and harvest. Sowing and reaping. Can you say amen? I want you to pray. Pastor George is going to come. Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. And as you do, you'll be blessed. Somebody shout, I'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, will you stand up with me? You know, I was having lunch with uh, Teddy today, and uh, we were talking about, you know, our love for the Word, and, you know, I, I was telling him how it, I need a scripture for everything. So I'm sitting down here, and, and I'm thinking to myself in the middle of the man's preaching, I thought, I got to have a verse, you know, for uh, an offering tonight, and the Lord just quickened this in me. Uh, you know the verse, Luke 6, 38, and this is the first part of it, give, and it will be given to you. So I said, give, and it will be given to you. And I feel freedom and liberty in this house. And if you want something given to you, give. So into the man of God. When you find a young preacher with a vision, you've got a hot soil bed to sow into. So tonight, we've got offering boxes in the back. You can also give online at bethanybillings.com. I want you to make your check out to Bethany Church. Everything is going to Brother Ted. We are so excited about sowing into him. We're just blessed to be able to do that. And whatever the Lord puts on your heart, I just want to challenge you. you got cash. you got a credit card. you got a check. You can, you can give online. You can give in the offering. Lord, whatever you put in the hearts and the minds of people tonight, we just pray, Lord, that it would multiply. I pray that it would be a blessing to Ted. I pray it would be a blessing on the people of God. I pray for multiplication. We're going to give, and it would be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over like Peter's boatful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I feel the blessing of God. I feel 
I feel a, a great, great, great sense of sowing into this ministry. So you can make a check out and get over there. Now, tomorrow night, I'm reminding everybody that we are going at 5.30 with Chili. And we're going to be here again. It would be great to pack this place out, wouldn't it? I mean, it's a Monday night. Tuesday night, nothing's even going on. So let's come back expecting, believing God to move in greater ways. Amen. Amen. We love you all very much. We will see you tomorrow night, 630. Love you all. Oh, freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. And I receive it. I reach my I lift my eyes where my help comes from. I look to you, my rock, my healer. I trust in you. Oh, freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here, and I receive.